Hey guys, it's Tosh. I'm back again. Um, and this time I am doing a Native American themed diorama. Yes. Um, so what led me to this, I actually went to Hobby Lobby with my children, which honestly you should never do. But anyways, I went there looking for inspiration and I found these guys. It's um, called Tube Toys, which I've seen them before, but never really thought anything about it. Um, that particular one is the Wild West tube toy. Um, but I also picked up the Powhatan uh, Native American Indian tube toys as well um, because I needed more Native American Indians. Anyways, um, they were cladly dressed, so you'll see here that I'm about ready to add some more clothing. So, um, point is, I um, got obsessed with this and decided to do a bunch of research on the computer about Native American Indians in Montana, and I, I found... Um, this picture, actually, in that just started me down an entire other rabbit hole. Um, that particular photograph was taken by a photographer named Roland Reed. Um, turns out he's got a lot of really cool photography. Yeah, that's him, Roland Reed, right there. Um, uh, he spent a very large sum of time here with the Blackfeet tribe. There's another one of his photos uh, in Glacier Park. Um, and he took all these amazing photos, and I obsessively looked at all of them <laughs> for details, things that I needed to know, because I wanted to recreate a Native American um, slash Blackfeet camp in Glacier National Park. More of his photos. Um, and so that's kind of how it all started, was, was that. Um, he spent a good portion of time photographing this particular tribe, um, from 1910 to 1915, and uh, his work is just awesome. So um, that's kind of where I got the inspiration for this particular diorama. So here you'll see um, I'm taking some of these Powhatan, I, I'm not sure, I think Powhatan, Powhatan, Powhatan Indians, which are actually from um, Virginia, but um, I needed more. So they were a little scantily clad dressed, so I don't think that's how you say that, but um, I decided to add some clothing, um, which came in the form of Mod Podge and uh, Viva-like cloth paper towels, which are actually amazing to use. So I just cut them up and Mod Podge them on, and here you see them. I'm painting them feverishly. And you can see here the little boy, he's, he's actually carrying a bowl of corn, which I later turn into pine cones because it didn't really make sense to have a bowl of corn in Glacier Park. Although I'm sure they farmed, um, but I didn't see that in any of um, Mr. Reed's photography. So I'm just going by what I found uh, and going there. Yeah. So here I'm just dry brushing. I've put the first layer of paint on and now I'm adding a bit of dry brushing to it to just kind of bring out all of that really cool texture and detail that was already on these little figures, which is the whole purpose that I bought them and the whole, like, everything. That's literally, yeah, okay, awkwardly talking, dry brushing. Yes, he still has corn. It will become pine cones. You may not see that, but I promise you it will happen. Um, this warrior uh, was in the Wild West one, and, and at first I thought maybe I should cover him up because he's going to get a bit cold in Montana, but then... Um, when I looked at a lot of Roland's photography, see, there's the final of all of them. That's what they look like in the end. I, I was trying to make this video quick. So oh, now, oh, oh. <laughs> here's Mr. Horsey. So the original horse that came in the Wild West tube was just not really scaled correctly to the size of my people. So um, I bought an entirely different tube just for this horse and decided to paint it because I didn't like it. So um, that's what I'm doing here. And I turned it, you'll see, I turned it into a painted horse. Like, not like a like a painted horse. I mean, yes, it's painted, but it's an actual, never mind. Just never mind. Um, and, you know, I'm kind of obsessed with um, details. So the painting was, I had to do, I just, yeah, that's hemp. Just so you know, that, that's hemp that I glued on to make look like real hair. It was really a pain in the butt, but it, I managed to do it. And I really love that horse. I love that horse. 
Um, so here I'm getting started on the base. I'm just cutting it out of... I can never remember the name of this foam. It's like insulation foam. I buy it at Home Depot. No, sorry, Lowe's. I get the two of those confused. Um, I buy it at Lowe's, and it comes in these big squares. And it's actually pretty cheap. But a cut's great. Um, real easy to cut. But if you ever use one of them foam cutters, um, you got to be careful because the fumes, the fumes could actually, like, really harm you. They're bad. So anyways, here I am. I am just gluing down the pieces for the board. I'm going to make a river. And honestly, I, I didn't have enough foam for this. So I just grabbed random bits and pieces that I could find um, to try and build up the scenery a little bit more. Because I did have a plan. Like I said, I'm kind of in my mind, this is Glacier Park. All right. And um, although what really makes it glacier is, well, the glaciers, and I'm not making any glaciers. It's just going to be a really pretty river. Okay. So you just have to use your imagination. And it's set during the fall time. So I wanted there to be lots of pretty colors during the fall. Fall is challenging. Blah, blah, blah. Challenging. I'm probably not going to edit any of this out. This is just going to be me rambling. So, um, there's that. I felt like I was going to say something else and then I forgot what it was. I'm sure it'll come back to me. Anyways, here I'm building up the texture of the rocks around the river with tin foil. Tin foil's great. Um, and then because my hand was sore from using the incredibly dull razor, I went to use pliers to just be very destructive. It's kind of, it feels kind of good. Um, it's somewhat satisfying to just rip and shred it apart. The next time I think I might use a screwdriver and just stab it. I've seen other people do that, and it looked really nice. Anyways, that's it. Now I'm going to cover it in, um, you know, uh, sculpt mold. Yeah, that stuff right there. Yeah, I'm going to cover the whole thing. Well, no, I'll probably leave the tin foil out because I've done that before where I've covered my tin foil and sculpt mold, and they were meant to be rocks, but then they just kind of ended up looking like everything else. So I decided to try something different this time. And so I just did sculpt mold mainly on, on the ground and the base around it and filling in the holes and in the bottom of the river, which you'll see shortly. This stuff's really nice to work with. It really is. Um, but it does kind of, you got, it, there is a perfect combination of water and sculpt mold to kind of keep it somewhat soft so you can, you can work with it before it dries. And, and I've wasted a lot of sculpt mold in the past because I didn't quite get that right. So, um, but the main point is here, I, I don't want to fill up the tin foil because I like the ridges of the tin foil. It's going to make it look more, more rocky later. But I, I did want to smooth out that riverbed bottom. I'm going to be adding some uh, different textures to that later. Plaster of Paris. I love this stuff. Um, I mix a very thin consistency, um, and then I just kind of spread it all over everything, including the tinfoil, trying to fill in the cracks and the holes so that later I can turn them into legit rocks. So that's what I'm doing here. It's just covering everything, every, especially the riverbed, because I am going to be pouring epoxy later, and if there's any holes leaking through to that foam, it's the end of the world. Well, the end of this diorama, any, anyways. Yeah. So, um, TP time. Yes, I decided to create a TP. Um, while the land is drying, I come over here and try to create this epic TP. I have it in my head. It's going to be amazing, right? And I'm like, okay, how do I build a TP? So I looked up all these different instructions. How did they do it? I mean, because they just threw them up like it was no big deal. And I thought, well, you know, if they can do it, I can do it. I was wrong. It was very, very difficult. So I ended up resorting to some hot glue. Um, see, these are all the instructions and all the different diagrams. And I thought, oh, that, that's easy enough. Um, this is a miniature. I, I can do that. No, I did not have the power of weight on my side. And these little sticks just were infuriating. So I ended up covering the entire TP with just a crap ton of hot glue just to, to get it to stay together, which later was bad. Because uh, hot glue, you, you just can't really paint hot glue. So I ended up going back. See, look at that monstrosity. Oh my gosh, it's actually embarrassing. 
Oh, and um, I did try to cover it once off camera thinking, well, I don't want to make a total ASS out of myself, so I'll just do it off camera and then, you know, I'll show that I know what I'm doing. But it didn't work out well either, and I ended up having to start from scratch. And so here I am starting all over again. And, you know, it worked. It worked. I had to do it in pieces. I definitely did not do it the way the Native American Indians did it. Now, this part, like, they, they really did do this. Not with toothpicks, obviously. They, like, made sharp little stakes and shoved them through their, um, would have been, what, buffalo hide. And it takes so many buffalo hide to make one. Oh, guys, seriously. I don't know how they did it. And so many of them. Anyways, so um, I used the Viva paper towel light cloth once again. Um, and then I, I covered the whole thing in Mod Podge once I had it built because I needed something structurally sound so I could, well, paint on it, which is what I'm doing now. And I wanted to give it kind of like a hide look. So I opted for these colors and then I wanted it to look a little worn. So, you know, and, and then, you know, they had fires inside. So I tried to create that like look and see there's a picture. I used that picture kind of as an idea. Although I didn't use the little stickies on the outside later. I forgot those. So there's that. But anyways, I was really happy with how it turned out. Um, I actually made two of them thinking that I was going to have like this whole camp. But um, turned out I may have overestimated how large my base would be. So, yay. Now the base is dry. I'm back over here. We're going to throw some paint down. Get the rocks painted up first. And, um, and then paint the land. We just, you know, I'm going to add dirt and textures to it, but I want a base that's at least kind of in the right direction as far as color goes. In case I miss a spot, it's well covered. And then here we are painting the bottom of the riverbed, which I wanted it to be bright. Um, I really wanted to go for like that aqua color. Um, you see a lot in Glacier Park. Um, I'm obsessed with, that's my favorite color, turquoise, aqua, whatever you want to call it. And there's a couple of lakes up in Glacier that are unbelievably turquoise and I love them. So I thought the turquoise would be cool. So that's kind of where I went with that. Uh, here we're doing some dirt. I love dirt. Put dirt on everything. I'm serious. Everything. And now I got this little trick from Luke Towen. He builds really cool railroad stuff. Really epic. And it's just, it's pantyhose over a cup. And so all the little fine pieces of dirt come out. And so here, I want to create different terrain textures. So I want different size. So I kind of, I go through and make all my different sizes. And then I pretend that they're rocks. So they make awesome rocks. Just glue them down. You have to be gentle with them because if they crumble on you, then they're kind of useless. So just glue all those suckers down, all different types of sizes. Try to keep the, the bigger rocks up in the, um, the waterfall area. And throw down some other sizes. Just kind of going for... That reality there. Do a little bit on land too, because we're gonna have it kind of everywhere. I mean, the terrain there in Glacier is kind of what I was going for, sort of. I mean, that's what inspired me originally. So there's gonna be a lot of rocks here and there. Oops, that was the dog. I'm pretty sure the dog just hit the camera. We're gonna blame the dog. So I cover it all with kind of the dark base that it's going to be. I'll come back over it later and add some dry brushing to really make them look like rocks. Now I'm adding another coat of paint to my riverbed because I still want that really pretty blue aqua color going on. And I, and I try to fade it into the edges um, with some greens and some burnt siennas, some yellow ochre. Now I'm adding all the dry brushing to kind of give it that reality. Reality to give it that look that kind of makes it look real. I'm just saying, dry brushing is like my favorite thing in the world. Oh yeah, got add some sticks and debris in the river. Uh, 
and some those are those were like little grass roots I dug up a bunch of grass this was obviously before the snow um, and that's a real stick that I painted to look like a real stick which makes absolutely zero sense but but as so here we are we're adding some epoxy this is the first pour I always do multiple pours because the first pour is very important you're gonna get a lot of bubbles because everything's got to seep into your little rocks in all your little areas so I just do one very thin pour right off the bat I have made the mistake of doing larger pours in the past and it doesn't go well I'm just gonna say it just doesn't go well so I just cover the entire base of the river in my first pour and then I'm gonna let that set and dry of course you don't see that part this is actually the second pour now um, but I, I waited full 24 hours before I did the second pour. Um, so now I'm just adding a little bit more depth to it. Um, the second pour always goes so much smoother. And actually I ended up doing three pours, but I don't think I show you that part. Don't know why I didn't. I should have. But anywho, um, I did two, three pours total. Yeah. So I'm jumping over for details. You know, I love details. And so we have to add a buttload of details to this camp. So I obsessively, of course, researched Native American Indian tools and stuff in camp. And so those were little wicker baskets. Now I'm making, I don't remember. I think, I think this is the drying rack, like for me. Maybe. Yeah, that's what it is. Yep. Mm -hmm. So their drying racks were a lot larger than this. Um, there was like several layers, but what else? Um, I had to make it smaller. I have less space to work with. This is a tanning rack. I think that's what they call them. Where they put the hides on to like dry out and stuff. This actually was really hard to make. <laughs> I make it look easy, but y'all... It was not easy. No, I did it several times. Um, and then as you can see here, I decided I had to tape everything down. It is a whole process of taping things down, re-gluing things. At one point, uh, I actually broke one of the sticks, and then I had to glue it. It was like this whole thing. This was hard. This was very hard. But it turned out. Uh, that's See, there's a picture. That's kind of what I was going for, something similar to that. So now I'm going to add um, some meat <laughs> to my drying rack. Again, like I said, the ones they would have had, there would have been multiple layers so that they could add multiple meat. But me, on the other hand, had a very small space to work with. So I just did just the one, the one little rack. And, yep, yeah, see, there's a picture of the multiple layers that I didn't have room for. So I just made this little guy. Yeah. Just this, this little, so my thought was to that, um, I'm making leather, by the way, those, uh, Viva light cloth paper towels really are amazing. Uh, now I'm painting. Wow. Okay. So we're painting now. That's great. Uh, the leather will come back in handy later, but right now we're just going to paint everything up, get that first layer of paint on it so that I can inevitably dry brush the crap out of it because it makes me happy. So, yeah, just throwing that first layer on. Oh, painting my little my little baskets. And here's my leather. It's all dried. So, and actually kind of looks kind of like leather. I mean, I'm just saying, turned out pretty cool. And uh, so here I am making like these little medicine bags that I found a picture of. Um, I think I'll show you a picture of what I found. Um, so they're really tiny and hard to make, but I like the little details like this. And so I obsessively made like five of them, although you only see maybe three. Um, but I made a lot so much so that at the end I didn't have a place to put them all. That's, that's how bad it was. Um, anyways, once, once that Viva Light cloth paper towel dries, it's, oh, see, there's a picture. See, I found that. And I thought, I want to do something like that because that's cool. Oh, we're dry brushing. Dry brushing. I love 
on to our birthday. Just makes everything just come alive. Well, not really, but you know what I mean. Like, oh, let's yeah, see. Look at that. Look at the little tiny thing. So pretty good. Ah, so <sighs> oh, yeah. Those are so fun. See, I got my tripod now. Now look how nice that looks. It's legit. So here's all my little details. You can even see, like, yeah, you see the details there? Yep, and there's my, my meat rack. It looks tasty, doesn't it? Yep, yeah, there it is. All of it. Well, actually, I, I made a lot more than that, but um, there was no room. So here I have some leftover epoxy, um, and I'm going to make, like, the uh, waterfall waves. No, not waves. They're, like, just, like, the streams coming down the waterfall. They needed to be more 3D. So this is, that's also a Ziploc bag. Um, I was too lazy to go find anything else to use. So I used that and it actually worked great. It's amazing. So there it is all dried up and that took a full 24 hours. Now I've got this Instacure stuff. It's supposed to dry really fast. Honestly, it wasn't fast enough. Not for me. So I cut all the little waves up and I stuck them on there. Wow, it's going so fast. I'm like not even talking fast enough. Okay, so now we're adding Mod Podge. Anyways, back to the resin. It just, it, it was supposed to be really fast. It wasn't fast. You miss the, you mix the two together. It's a two part and it's supposed to like just instantly set. I need to get some of that UV stuff. Okay, so here I'm making ripples with Mod Podge. You've seen me do this before. And honestly, the best thing in the world. Love Mod Podge. So now I'm going to add the, the, the white water. You know, the fluffy white water. And that's that's pretty much what I just did. Yep. Oh, we're moving on now. Okay, so I decided that I needed to add more detail. Imagine that. Me and detail. So I wanted to make these blankets. So the Native Americans were, oh, man, so good at making these blankets out of... I don't know what they used, honestly. I mean fibers, plant fibers and stuff like that. Like what they could make was amazing. So I decided that, um, you know, it's fall. And, um, even though I, I dressed my little figures warmer, some of them might get a little cold. So I decided to make some blankets to keep everybody warm. And I really just wanted to make blankets bad. It was quite the process. Um, but it was so fun. And then, like, you're trying to add these little details to them. You'll see I kind of messed up on a couple, but, you know, it's fine. Um, and some things that you didn't see, that you won't see in the video, is that um, they're all very nicely painted here. You'll see the final nice paint job. But what I end up doing, especially on the blankets that I used, was I did dry brush them um, with, like, some grays and, and light grays just to kind of make them look used because they were used. <laughs> oh, I did find some pictures on Google. So I was trying to kind of base these blankets off of what they would have looked like realistically. I don't know if they would have had this much detail back then because all the pictures I found were black and white. So I'm just guessing, really. Yeah. Just guessing, adding this and that. Oh, I made my own stamp, but I was kind of disappointed because it, it didn't really look like a triangle. I mean, it did, but it didn't. It wasn't like a legit triangle. It was like a triangle blob. And then for some reason decided to use a bigger one on the other side. I don't know. that They probably would not have done that, but there's the final. All my different little blankets that I didn't even use all of them, but I sure enjoyed making them. Okay, so this is like the best and worst thing ever. Static grass. Okay, I love the way static grass looks, but I hate putting it on. I hate it. It's frustrating. And I think it's probably because I bought the cheapest static grass applicator I could find. Um, and, and I could just be doing it wrong. I don't know. Um, but it, yeah. So here you, you put the glue down, you shake the grass on, and then you vacuum um, the rest of it up that you, you know, don't want. And so this is where you put the glue, it should stick. And anyways, so I went with a really light colored grass. And so now I'm just adding some darker shades so that it looks a little bit more realistic. 
I got that part done, so I'm just kind of like dreading doing the rest. It's just, it's hard. It's hard. And another thing I should have done was cover up my river, not my resin, because I had grass everywhere. And ugh, it was everywhere, everywhere. And it was very frustrating. So this is the finale. Like, I'm done with the grass. I'm just adding all the, the darker shades. Um, I even throw down some dirt. Mm -hmm. I like to throw in the dirt because I feel like, you know, um, it's kind of a little too bright and pretty. It needs to be dirty because, you know, it's outside. So now I'm adding just little bits and pieces around the rocks and the different areas where I thought something was missing. <laughs> yes. Yep, lots of little bushes. Most of these um, I got off of Amazon, too. Oh, and I, I made these trees. I did. I made them. All of them. All the trees you'll see I made. But I couldn't fit them in this video. It would have been way too long, so I'll come out with a separate video on how I made my trees. I even made the foliage. 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 Whatever. I made the leaves out of sawdust from my shop that I work at. Because I work at a cabinet shop. I don't know if I told you that. But I like to scavenge the um, sawdust off of the floor. I'm sure my co co-workers think I'm nuts because I will randomly bring in Ziploc bags and fill them with sawdust. That's all right. I'm not embarrassed. I like to fly my freak flag. Here we are, gluing down some more bushes. <laughs> Don't tell my husband that I cut up his... <laughs> Don't tell him that I cut this up, okay? He, he doesn't ever need to see this video. Very nice paintbrush, um, but it looked amazing. <laughs> so I just used a little bit. I mean, it's still usable. I could probably stain something with it right now. Um, it's just missing some bristles is all. So I'm flying through this part because at this point, what? We're like 27 minutes in, guys. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I had this. I wanted to make the campfire light up. This is what I'm doing. I'm last minute. I should have done this at the beginning before I put all those trees on, but whatever. That's how it works for me. Um, lay down some dirt, glue it down. I'm going to turn it into a campfire. But while that's drying, I'm going to start gluing people on, which is really hard for me because um, it's final. So, oh, there's my horse. Yeah, I put a blanket and some more paint on her. I, I'm imagining it's a girl horse because she's pretty. Um, and uh, the warrior that rides her. Yeah, they have matching blankets. See what I mean? I, I kind of aged the blankets a bit. Oh, here's Chief. Got a glue in Chief. They're having a very serious conversation over here on, on the side of the teepee. Oh, back to the fire. See what? Keep your eyes on the fire. I'm painting it. Oh, and I decided to actually burn sticks. Because I thought real burnt sticks in the fire would be cool. So, and I did catch it on fire a lot. But here we are. I've, I've got my campfire. And it lights up. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, there's my blanket. Another one. I had to fight the urge to put blankets on every one. It's very difficult. It's all coming together now. There's my medicine bags on my little tripod thing. Here's the final video. Eek. P.S. I ended up actually ripping most of that Mod Podge off because it was filled with grass and I was annoyed. So, um, yeah, everything turned out really well, though. I'm really happy with it. My drying rack, um, I threw a medicine bag on there because why not, you know? And not really sure what she's doing with the fire. I think she's trying to fan it. Uh, like I said, I had to fight the urge to put a blanket on everybody. Oh, but I did put a blanket, like, a, you can barely see it there. See, the baby, the baby, 
um, that's a baby carrier, like a legit, they, they use the blankets and tied them around their kids and tied them to their backs. And that's how they carried their kids around, which is also how I carried my kids. Um, I loved carrying. So yeah, that blanket came in handy for that. Um, I put some wheat in her, th um, it's, it's wild wheat, by the way, yeah, there it is, and all its beautiful fall colors, I love that horse, that's like my most favorite thing about, like, this entire diorama is that horse, oh, by the way, did you know that the war paint, every single symbol on that horse actually means something, yeah, I didn't know that. I just thought that they like to pretty them up. But no, every single mark has a meaning. Um, some of them, not so great, but some of them good. Some of them are really good. See? Pine cones. I had to put them over by the pine tree because he needed to collect some pine cones. So, father and son collecting pine cones. There it is, guys. Oh my gosh, it's done, finally. The editing probably took longer than the making. But I want to thank everybody for watching. Um, can't wait to do the next one. Every time I'm done, I get to start a new one, so I'm excited. Okay, all right, thanks, guys. Bye.